our topic today, which is a common topic when, you, when we're getting clients. So it's really about that initial contact with the client that we're all very afraid of when, until we do it a few times. Um, and, you know, kind of the steps. And this is a kind of, a, what are those called, crib notes? Uh, uh, it's not every single detail along the way. There's a lot of different uh, situations and scenarios that can come into play that change everything. It, like it changes what you say and how you say it. This is just an example, a common example of um, kind of how, how a situation where somebody would call you would go down. All right. So you can take notes uh, or you can just refer back to this because it'll be taped and put into the uh, Zoom uh, recordings in the classroom. Are you guys liking the, the platform, by the way? Those that saw the, our last set? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Good. I like awesome. it. Cool. All right, so let's get busy. Let me find it. So um, I'll scribble some things on this whiteboard here, and uh, you can just ask questions along the way. Uh, wait till the end, it doesn't matter. And uh, so, okay, a call comes in. Um, what I, and you can always change this, you know, to whatever makes you feel good. But, um, you know, initial small talk, I think, is uh, important. You don't want to overdo it, but uh, just like greetings and kind of ask where they're located, the type the type of business that they have, the size of business that they have, uh, the type of business entity, uh, you know, what, so the type of business, okay, let me clarify that. There's, I asked what, it, you know, one of the questions is what, it, what is it that you guys do? And then there's also the type of business or business entity type. And that, that is, uh, is it an S corp? Is it a sole proprietorship? an LLC, regular corporation, that kind of thing. So um, this kind of all, it's sort of small talk because you're not getting into the actual weeds of things yet. Um, but it, it starts to set the groundwork. And it's also really important to start building a connection of uh, this kind of question and answer with your, with your client uh, where they, they'll start to feel comfortable with you because uh, you're asking good questions. Um, if you've ever hired somebody and uh, they ask you good questions, then you, you just kind of know by talking to them, uh, by, by the questions that they ask you, that they know what they're doing. And I know you don't, if you're just starting out, you don't feel like you know what you're doing, but that's okay. Um, this, is, this all is part of getting there. Uh, so the initial small talk, let's start there. All right, I have to plan, <laughs> plan on spacing. Um, can you guys see that all right, kind of? All right, um, so just like regular greetings, right? I don't know if I should write all this actually. It's a lot of writing. So just for your own note taking, it's the initial greetings, uh, you know, what type of business they're, you know, also like the, um, where they're at, locate, they might be right down the street and then you automatically have a connection with them. And that that's really important for them to feel comfortable with you. You can talk about, you can go off on talking about kind of the same thing, like the same, oh, I was at the, you know, coffee shop right next to your place yesterday, that kind of thing. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, all this does, um, I mean, the beauty of this, small talk conversation is it really, it builds this trust factor. You know, they're talking to you, you can carry on a conversation and, uh, and having something in common with people is very important for them. Um, Cause later on, you're going to be talking about a price <laughs> and, and they are either going to take you up on that 
offer or they're going to find somebody else. So um, you want to be authentic, genuine, um, but also put these kind of skills in place where you're carrying on a con carrying on a conversation with somebody. It doesn't have to be very, you know, bullet points, you know, okay, let's go down this list, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's you want to cover everything I'm I'm going to talk about, but you don't have to uh, do it extremely formally. Okay. So that initial small talk is important. You're learning about the business. Let me put that. You're learning about the business and them. And you're building trust. This is very important. Okay. The next thing you want to talk about is, um, yeah, and this will just, these all just flow right into the next thing. Um, as I always say, so what are, what are your, what's your current situation? What are you doing for your bookkeeping right now? Um, and uh, the other thing, not only do they have books, what software they're using, if it's, if they're bookkeeping to, I always say, do you, do you believe your bookkeeping is up to date? And is your books, are your books clean? These are important things to, that this, again, this is information gathering for you because you're going to give them, uh, what, what I do is I give them an estimate. Further down this conversation, I give, I give, them, an est give them an estimate. So this is all part of the data that I'm taking in um, to determine how much work there is to, to do where that starting point would be, um, and uh, you know what the, what my price is going to be. So you want to you want to ask um, the current situation. That's software. If you're just wanting to use QuickBooks. You know, you want them to be on QuickBooks or not anything at all, or on a different software and willing to move over to QuickBooks. If they're on a different soft, somebody recently had a, a potential client that was on a different software, and I believe they, they were going to learn the software. Is that you, Faye? Uh, they were, they were, yeah, they were, you were thinking about learning that other software. And, you know, that's, you know, that's a, if you're good at QuickBooks, like me, I, you know, I would have to really think about whether I wanted to take on a client that wasn't using QuickBooks because I just know QuickBooks. Uh, so uh, I'm sure it's doable, but uh, it's whether or not I want to go down that road and I have to, would have to charge an appropriate amount to, to learn it. I'm sure it's most likely user friendly. So, but anyways, so this the software is it uh, current current book situation? <clears throat> current books, do they exist? How clean are they? How up to date are they? Have they been reconciled? With I, you know, a good question to ask. When do you know when the last time they've been reconciled? <laughs> They may or may not know the information, this, you know, this information, then that's okay. You don't have to tell them to find out. You just, you know, you're, you're going to find it out eventually. Uh, but it, a lot of times, uh, they usually have a good idea, I would say. They're not always right. But. And then this flows into, uh, let me check my notes, make sure I'm not forgetting something. So uh, the next thing would be uh, asking them what they're what they want you to do. So what what do you want what are you wanting done? So they because they might say yeah I've got this business selling whatever and uh, <clears throat> my books haven't been done for this calendar year yet and uh, haven't been using QuickBooks. Uh, but I'm willing to move over to QuickBooks, and so then your then your question is kind of what what are you wanting what do you want done, and then they 
you, I mean, you can give them options as well. Um, as you get more familiar with all of this process, you'll know what the options are. Um, so if it's a company that has been using just say like an Excel, Excel spreadsheet to keep their books, like a lot of startup companies will just keep track of their expenses and they'll, they'll know what income is coming in, if any. And then what you can do is take up, you know, just say, I, I can take it, take it over and, you know, get you started on QuickBooks and we can uh, bring it up to date from January 1st up to the current date, whatever month you're in at that time. Um, you know, give, give them options, but let at your, it's really up to them. What, and before you can give them a price, you need to kind of come to an agreement on what it is that they want done. So uh, that's what you want to ask is what are their needs? Or what do they want done? <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn the air conditioning on or I'm gonna start sweating. Um, yeah, so the and so there might be catch up, catch up work, clean up. Those are two different things. And then ongoing maintenance. So uh, the example that we heard a little while ago was that they want, they're going to do 2021. They want her to start uh, 2022, uh, January 1st, 2022. Uh, so she's going to be doing what's called a catch-up. She's going to be doing from January 1st, 2021 through the current date. That's catching up. And then she might, depending on if they want her to continue on, she'd be doing ongoing maintenance. And then there's, there's also a thing called cleanup, which is somebody's done the books already. Let's say the books are caught up, but they're not clean. And by not clean, I mean, uh, they're just, there's entries in there that are outstanding, that shouldn't be outstanding. There's just, a, uh, you know, there's a lot of clutter in the books that shouldn't be there. The entries that, are should, that shouldn't be there are there. And that can, that causes a very messy situation. That's cleanup. Cleanup is more for as you get more advanced. You can do catch up, and you can do ongoing maintenance as as a newbie. But cleanup is taking somebody else's work, determining what's wrong with it, and cleaning it up. And it takes a takes a little higher level. So once you get more experience, you'll be able to start taking those on. Like a, so I just, I, I'm not quite done with it yet, but I was, I, this week I've been working on uh, books for a client and there is, there was catch up, clean up, and I'll probably be doing ongoing maintenance. Um, but my job, what I quoted him to do was just catch up. And I, because I told him, I, here's the price that it would be for me to catch it up. I needed to catch up from the beginning of the year to through uh, June. And we're about to roll out, get out of July. So that would be an ongoing maintenance, but I've caught it up through uh, June 30th and uh, from January 1st, reconciled everything. But there's a, they, they, they make the entries themselves into QuickBooks and sometimes they do it good and sometimes they don't. Some things are sitting out there that I have no idea what they are. So, but my job wasn't to, because these are projects. When you have messy books, that's a project to clean up the books. Um, that's a, that can be a semi-easy thing or it can be a very complex thing to determine what is this entry and why is it here? Um, so that you have to take literally each entry and kind of, do an investigation on it and determine if it should even be in there. Um, so catch a clean up itself is more for the, the more advanced. So, um, so if you do get a client that's wants you, wants you to catch things up and they, they make entries into QuickBooks themselves, uh, then you need to price it uh, accordingly to where you're just, uh, 
you're just pricing the catch up and maybe the ongoing maintenance. And then you can come back. You can do all that without doing cleanup and you, you can come back to clean things up. So that's, that's a project. <laughs> and the, uh, you should be able to charge a good amount of money for it. Uh, all right, so now then you get into the cost. So you've gathered this information, you have a starting point, like where, where you would start with the books and where they need to go, what, which of these you're going to be doing. So you can get an idea of, um, you know, how much you would charge them. And what I, until I see the books, because a lot of times the client is mistaken about what they have going on, that you can't get a perfect picture of uh, how, they, you know, the status of their books. I like to see the books and I like to see, unless, they, unless I see the books and I can just tell they're very clean uh, and up to date, reconciled, I'd like to also see the bank statements and credit card statements. So I know exactly how much work there is involved. And then I give a firm quote, but I can just tell by the information that we've talked about so far enough to give them kind of a soft quote. And uh, this is a really good thing to put out there because if they're looking for something that is very inexpensive and you are, you know, they're looking for a price down here and you're way up here, then you can just save each other uh, time from here on out. You don't have to go on. Um, they're just not a good fit for each other. Uh, but once you, once you give out a, an estimate uh, and they're okay with it, then you can move on. So I give out initial cost. Don't be done on me. Initial cost. Assessment. So I've really already assessed their books at this point, but I'm giving them the the number that I've kind of uh, fell upon in my head. Now, I do things a particular way. You can adopt that way, or you can uh, do what other people do. Some other people do, and that's kind of come up with a formula. But it's hard to do a formula if you don't see the uh, number of transactions, you don't see the books. This is still before I've seen the books. And it's just a soft estimate, which is, I say basically a sentence like this. If based upon the information that you've told me so far, it sounds like your bookkeeping would be X amount. And if it's an ongoing maintenance number, I would say it'd be X amount per month. If it's a catch up, I would come up with a number like, so the one I just did is a perfect example. It's it was six months of catch up. And I determined that it probably be like X amount per month. And I said, so it would, that would be six months of that. So six months time, six months times that number would be the amount it would take for me to catch up your books. And then if everything uh, works out all right, then we want to continue to work together. That's my contract, by the way. Uh, on we would do ongoing maintenance for that same amount per month. So, and then I would just say, you know, this is just based upon the information I have so far. Once I get into your books, before I actually start any real work, I would be able to firm that number up. And if it's different than what we've talked about, I will communicate that to you before I start the work. So that makes them feel comfortable. That gives them a number. They can just you know, that sounds good to them now or doesn't sound good to them now. And if uh, they are okay with it, then you can move on to start the information gathering, basically. Um, uh, and, you know, come up with a game plan. So now what that price is, everybody wants to know how much you would charge for this and that. There's a, I have videos on that. Uh, so we won't get into pricing today. Because uh, it's there's a lot of factors involved. Um, so this right here is this initial cost assessment is estimate. So you want to make sure that that you communicate that to them. And like I said, let them know that 
because this makes them feel comfortable. Let them know that, you know, once, and it also gives you an out, is that once you get into the books, once you look at the books and see exactly what, the, you know, the real information that uh, you need, um, the books and the bank statements and the credit card statements, only then you're going to know for sure if you've made the right estimate. Um, and then you can communicate that to them. That gives you an out. Like you can, I've gotten in, I've given an estimate before and it goes both ways. Sometimes you kind of hit it on the mark and then sometimes you're, you know, you underestimated, sometimes you overestimate. If you say something and I like this last one, I estimated it would be X amount. Um, and I, I think I overestimated, but he was okay with the price. I got into it. I was able to knock out the work rather quickly. Um, so if I were to factor out the um, amount of hours that I actually spent for the amount of money, I was making really good money. Then there's also going to be times where you give a quote and then you get into it and it kind of eats up more time than you thought it would. And so you're, um, that one you're going to be a little lower and but that's kind of how it is sometimes uh, sometimes you make really good money on clients and sometimes you make decent money but on average you're making good money um, and then it's just a question of whether or not did you underestimate it to the point where you need to t tell them and it's okay if you did it's not a big deal because you are you already told them that you that you would um, be contacting them if they got into it and it was different than you expected. So that's okay to do that. I'm just saying that you don't need everything to fall onto an exact amount per hour if you were to uh, calculate it by hour. And remember, I like to fix, uh, I like flat rate. I flat rate things. You don't have to do that. You can do hourly, but I have videos on, on why I flat rate versus uh, hourly. But that's just an individual preference, okay? So you gave out the estimate. They say, okay, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. What if they say, no, that doesn't sound reasonable. They say, no, I thought it would be, oh, that, you know, because sometimes they're going to say, oh, that's more than I was expecting. And then the best thing you can do is say, what were you expecting? And then if, they, if they're close, you can say, well, how about, you know, X amount, which might be in, in between your two numbers. If you say 300, they say 200, how about 250? And then everybody's happy. Um, but then again, you want to stress like, I, you know, I still need to look at the books and make sure that it's, uh, that that's the right amount. All right, so let's say they say, okay, that's good. All right. So now you want to get into the uh, formulating the attack. Let's see. You can still see down here. I don't know why I'm using the word formulating, really. <laughs> I think I did this this morning at about 5 a.m. So uh, coffee was kicking in or something. Um, it's the plan of attack, actually. But um, so now you need to you need to ask yourself what what needs to happen to they say you know you've determined that they need the books cleaned up from or caught up from January first of this year. So you've you've already basically have you know what. Uh, what needs to be done. All right. So if you've really already determined what needs to be done. Um, and then it's a matter of just kind of verbalizing that. So you sit, you can kind of just say to them, okay, uh, well, I think we've determined that you know, you need your books cleaned up from January 1st to, you know, end of this, end of last month. And it's always end of last month because we're in the, whatever month you're in, you're in it already, you're in that month. So you just want to always put it towards the, at the end of the last month. So we're still in July. Um, so anything, any type of 
this type of business that or work that I would take on today or until the end of July, I'd say through the end of June. Okay. Um, that's why I'm coming up with that date. Um, so we've already determined through this uh, what needs to be done, but it's just really about uh, vocalizing it because you're, uh, you know, you're about to pull in the information that you need to make sure make that happen. So you're clear on what needs to be done, and then you need to get the information. So uh, what I do here is we're still good. A point homework. So you can even say, so what I need from you is uh, what, so you need to tell them what they need to do in a nicer way than this. You need to get me this and I need to do this. So in order for me to do what I need to do, I need this from you. Um, so what they what they will typically need to get you is an invite to their QuickBooks if they're using QuickBooks online, or if they and if they have QuickBooks uh, QuickBooks, um, and that's let's use that scenario. They have QuickBooks already, so you would want to get QuickBooks online. You would want to get an invite to their QuickBooks so that you can get in there and look around. Uh, you'd also be asking them for either their bank either PDFs of their bank statements and credit card statements uh, or transaction history in Excel form or uh, the best thing to, to have them get you is view only access to their accounts. And this is, has different terms like accountants view or, uh, but it's, it's view only access that you can set up, they can set up in their bank account, give you a username and password so that you can get into their bank account and just view transactions. You can't move money around. And I always tell them this, most people kind of know by now, but definitely in the early days um, of online banking, and you'd have to make sure it's clear to people that you're not going to be able to, you know, be writing checks and moving money or transferring money. You, you can only view what's going on in there. Um, so you, uh, put, you tell them, you know, what, what you need from them. And then you tell them what what you'll do. So, um, so yeah, you tell you give them their homework and say, okay, so uh, when we, you know, at your earliest convenience, send me that invite to your QuickBooks. Um, I'll, I'll get in there, look around, make sure that, uh, you know, just get, get an idea of what's going on in there. Uh, send me your bank statements or, and credit card statements or set me up with view only access to those. And I'll make sure I can get into those. Um, and then, then I'll be able to, get going on the uh, on the job at hand. And then you can say, you know, the first thing I'll do is just after I get in there and look around really, really well, uh, determine that our estimate is correct. And if it is, then I'll be able to move forward with the job. And I'll just start knocking it up. And I, the other, I tell them that I'll keep in good communication with them along the way. It's good to, it's good to send them emails uh, periodically that you're moving along on the project. You don't want to just, you know, a week or two goes by and they have no idea if you're working on it or not. So good communication is very important. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, different scenarios can, you know, lead to different things you talk about. But, um, but that is really pretty much the fundamentals the bare bones of what you need to do.